all right boys so here we are officially done with season number one didn't quite end how we wanted it to do but i do feel like we had we played one hell of a year man let's go ahead and take a look at our final statistics for the season hitters man we had some guys who really hit the cover off the ball so our top hitter on the team was jacob igawa he, he, he hit 370 uh 74 hits 33 runs scored 35 rbis five home runs Cole Cabrera hit 369, 32 stolen bases, which is nuts, 76 hits, 52 runs scored, 30 RBIs, three home runs. Duarte really surprised me. 364, 67 hits, 29 RBIs, four home runs. Donahue hit 347 with three home runs, 70 hits, uh, 25 RBIs. He was our leadoff guy. Meow, he hit 322, 64 hits, 36 RBIs, six home runs. Wong, 302, 65 hits, six home runs, 56 RBIs. Quant hit just under 300, 291. Scotty Scott, 281. Kyson Donahue didn't really hit, you know, the way I thought he was going to, but it looks like he did lead us in home runs with seven. Yeah, so he was our top power guy. Our RBI leader is going to be Wong with 56. The next closest person was Meow, 20 behind. Cabrera and Donahue scored 50 or more runs. Agawa also hit 19, 19 doubles, 15 for Meow, Duarte, and Donahue. Nine triples for Dallas Duarte, which is absolutely insane. He led us in total bases. Duarte struck out the most on the team with 40. Don, Jordan Donahue worked the most walks with 39, 35 for Donahue, 34 for Cabrera. Top on base percentage for us this year is going to be Cabrera with 463, 459 for Donahue, 446 for Duarte, 429 for Igawa. Duarte slugged the highest at 609. I wish we had somebody that slug, slugged a little bit higher, but we didn't hit for a lot of power, whether I was simming or whether I was actually playing the games. We definitely lacked a lot of pop. OPS, Duarte led everybody in OPS with a thousand. We're not going to count Bryson Browns because he only played one game, but Duarte did his in 50 two games which is absolutely insane when it comes to pitching Pontes went 12 and 3 had the most had the most wins also had a crazy era under three uh best era on the team of course goes to our closer he went two and on the season seven saves two blown saves Pontes blew a save as well which was in the last game where he got that loss um era leaders uh i mean Pontes is the only starter he's the only other pitcher besides our closer that had a sub three era man but you know what i mean halamanu had eight wins this year archer was four and three you know what i mean a lot of bullpen wins for us this season um you know we only had what 12 12 losses 16 losses throughout the whole entire season let's take a look at how we fared with uh you know some of the top guys in the nation so we had guys hitting the high 400s you know what I mean? But as you can see, it wasn't even enough to be one of the one of the leaders in the nation. But if we come over here to our conference, to the WAC conference, you know what I mean? There's Egala 370, 369 for Cabrera. I said high 400s, they're hitting the high 300s. That was my apologies. Um, you know what I mean? So we got some uh, conference leaders. When it comes to home runs, we weren't even close. When it comes to RBIs, Matt Wong led the, led the conference in RBIs. Let's take a look at where he stacked up with uh, everybody else in the nation. His 56 RBIs are gonna put him you know let's just say basically tied for like you know third or fourth or something like that you know what i mean so th that's good stolen bases this year somebody stole 70 bases i thought we stole a lot with 30 something you know what i mean uh take a look at cabrera in the in the conference he uh was third in the conference with steals third in the conference for run score um we had the fourth of most hits in the, in the conference with 76 we also had 74 for igawa when it came to doubles we were top five in doubles with igawa when it came to triples duarte led the conference in triples anxious to see where that stacked in the nation put some fifth in the nation in triples when it comes to walks i don't think we had anybody to lead the nation but when it comes to conference donahue was right there on base percentage, uh, we we didn't have a crazy on base percentage. Donahue had 459, Cabrera had 463. I mean, that's crazy, but the college is a little bit different. Um, you know, then when it comes to pitching, we led the conference in wins. Um, when it comes to the nation, we were we ended up being third in the nation in wins behind Texas State and Tennessee. But I think this is because they went deeper in their playoff run as well. Um, average against uh, when it comes to starters. We might have had one of the highest ones because it looks like a lot of relievers here have uh, um have low averages against, so we're not going to show as top of the nation. I wish it was broken up between relievers and starters. When it comes to strikeouts this season, we didn't lead the nation. When it came to walks this season, we didn't throw the most. Complete games, we did lead the nation in complete games with as first and second, Pontes and, Mala and Halamanu. Um, they both had a shutout this year. When it comes to innings pitched, Pontes is top five of 117 in the third. So, you know what I mean? The guys, I mean, guys play well, bro. Guys play well. I'm not mad at it. Let's take a look at award winners now. First team All-Americans. The fact that 
Pontez is not a first team all American is absolutely bullshit to me, but okay. Second team all Americans. Do we have anybody? Pontez is a second team baseball, uh, America, all American. When it comes to third team, um, we don't have anybody on that list. Next up, we got a baseball America, all offensive team. We had some guys that had great offensive years, but not top in the nation. When it comes to Rawlings gold gloves, we don't have anybody that got a gold glove this year. All right, so now we got um, all conference first team. Take a look at the WAC, Igawa, Cabrera, Pontes, Halamanu are all first team all conference performers. Second team all conference, Duarte, Donahue, Wong, Archer, and Pendle. When it comes to third team All-American, Scotty Scott is on the list, Meow is on the list, Quant is on the list, so shout out to those guys. So when it comes to the conference all-freshman team, doesn't look like there was a ton of freshmen in our conference, but Donahue does make it. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, I love the season Donahue had. Like, he's only going to be able to build off of this, bro. 347, three home runs, 25 RBIs, 50 runs, 10 stolen bases, 70 hits, 459 on base, slug 500. As a leadoff guy, I'm very, very anxious to see what the rest of his career looks like. Baseball All-America All-Conference team. Donahue was not going to get the nod at first base for the first team. Second team, Donahue does get the nod. You know what I mean? So Donahue was racking up some awards, you know what I mean, for being one of the top freshmen in the nation. Third team, of course, we didn't have any more freshmen. Baseball All-American Freshman of the Year goes to uh, goes to Tool or Tule, Tule for, it looks like it goes to Wolfert. 367, 45. I mean, Donahue didn't even get a vote, bro. That's kind of crazy. I feel like Donahue had a hell of a year. I really don't know what they wanted to see, but whatever. The Roger Clemens Award, we finished top 10 with Pontes, uh, Dollinger. What, what was the stats pitching wise this year? 19 games, 15 wins, one loss. I mean, he deserved that. He deserved that. You know what I mean? We had a lot of no decisions with Pontes this season, but Pontes is a junior. Hopefully, he comes back for his senior year. Conference. Um, conference player of the year goes to young from Louisiana tech in the whack. I mean, he deserved it 472, 84 hits, nine home runs. Yeah. But Cole Cabrera finishes top five at number four, 369, 76. I mean, if he didn't go on a crazy slump, like he did, and he would have kept hitting in the four hundreds, maybe Wong also finishes top 10. And so does Duarte Wong and Duarte, both juniors, both hoping that they are able to come back for another year. Baseball America offensive player of the year. Of course, we don't get that. EA Sports Most Outstanding Player goes to Langford from uh, Boo F. And Conference Pitcher of the Year, Pontes easily gets that. I was going to be really, really surprised if he didn't get that. Halamanu and Pendle both finished in the top 10 at 5 and 6. Conference Freshman of the Year, let's take a look at the whack. Donahue is going to walk away with that award. I mean, when it comes to freshman, uh, freshman accolades, Donahue was racking them things up. And of course, we know we ended up losing to the eventual college, uh, college World Series champion. Um, you know what I mean? And Texas's Stele gets the player of that con of the College World Series. This is the College World Series. Um, you know what I mean? All tournament team. UC Santa Barbara has people all over it. I mean, those dudes just showed up in the postseason when it was time to go. So now it is time to eventually advance and begin the offseason. Would you like to advance to the offseason? Yes. Cole Cabrera. I thought about doing some cheesy shit, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I was gonna grant Cole Cabrera like an extra year to play because he's our best player and I would love to see him come back for another year. But I wanted to keep this realistic, man. Time to say goodbye to him. We also got rid of some of these caps that, you know, remember the roster wasn't fully finished. They graduate. We also say goodbye to Andy Archer and Buddy Pendle. Um, so we're losing three uh, very important people to the team this year. Cole Cabrera starting center fielder. Archer was in the rotation. Pendle was one of our top arms out of the pen that we went to, but we didn't have anybody transfer. We didn't have anybody go home for homesickness. You know what I mean? So that is definitely, definitely a plus. So take a look at player progression. Scotty Scott goes up. He gets plus 17 to power versus righties, plus 18 to contact versus righties. Kyson Donahue goes up as well, plus five contact plus to righties, plus eight contact to lefties. Aaron Ujamari, he goes up even though he didn't get a lot of playing time, but he might have to step up. We might have to move some guys around and possibly move some guys to the outfield to replace Cole Cabrera, but we do hopefully have some guys coming in you know what I mean? Uh, you know, from recruiting that could step in day one. Rivera actually regresses, but he didn't play much. So I don't really see how that's going to hurt, but he has, you know, two to three more. He has two, at least two more years of eligibility. Dalton Renee uh, goes up plus 18 on his four seam, plus eight stamina, plus three to a splitter. Donahue goes up plus eight versus righties uh, power plus two contact versus lefties plus five power plus four contact speed stays the same meow gets better plus seven power versus lefties plus 16 power versus righties plus eight 
contact versus righties. The Warte goes up as well, plus two, plus nine, plus one versus lefties, and versus righties, plus 29, plus eight, plus one. That means he's completely outplayed, you know what I mean, what they thought he was gonna be able to do. Matt Wong goes up as well. He gets faster, which means he probably lost some weight. Power goes up versus lefties big time. He loses power versus righties, but contact goes up versus lefties. Ichimura goes down a little bit. Fastball loses some luster, but eh, it's not really nothing to go crazy about. Ali Caldera gets better, gets faster. Derek Quant gets better, loses power versus lefties, but he does get uh, plus 13 contact versus righties. Igawa, you know, I would love to see, I would love to see what happens to like his fielding attributes. You know what I mean? Cause he was, he was doing the damn thing fielding this year, but he goes up, Harrison goes up, Halamanu goes down, but he gets plus 16 to his four seam, loses two to a slur, plus 10 to a splitter. Um, Austin Tashira goes up, plus 20 circle chains, plus 22 splitter, plus four slur, but his stamina goes down, but mainly because he was in the pin mostly all year. Uh, Tyler Dieball gets better. Pontes goes down, not really making sense to me. Stamina, maybe because he did pitch a lot of innings, plus 16. Uh, so there's four scene plus three slaughter plus 29 change up negative two to his circle change uh hagen gets better um you know so all in all bro um the guys guys did well i mean i'm not complaining about it i'm not i'm not mad or upset about what we're seeing from these guys i feel like you know what i mean we lost one of our best players but we are going to get better oh bro so i've been playing this game since 2006 right 2007 and i had no clue you could do this so if you hit trainer on a guy working closely with the fielding coach scotty scott is able to change the secondary position to one of the following first base center field or outfield so he's already can play left or right and scotty scott probably won't play first though because we got kyson kyson could change his to he could play any position in the infield not sure i really want him to do that well his field is a 95 and range is a 75 so he plays first and third we could put, move him to catcher don't think we're going to want to do that though because Duarte is the man back there you know what i mean but i want to work closely to this to see what we can do so donahue i'm gonna change kyson kyson i could see me moving him to outfield you know what i mean and maybe moving somebody else up to first because we are losing an outfielder we're going to be pretty light there but i'm gonna move him i'm gonna move kyson to infield He'll be able to play all the infield. Ujamari, uh, he can also play short and second. I'm gonna move his to infield. Um, Rivera, we can we can move him around. I want guys to have the abilities to play all over, you know what I mean, to play multiple positions. Renee can't do that with pitchers. Donahue, I can see Donahue being able to play the whole entire infield as well, but I don't see him moving from this from the middle infield, but I can also see me moving Donahue to center field. So I like that. We can move his secondary position to center field. He might be stepping up to, to play center field for Cole Cabrera. Meow, you know what I mean? We could change this to utility. I feel like Stone Meow is definitely one of those guys that could play all over. So I'm gonna move his to utility. I wanna be able to use him. Duarte 95 speed, another guy I could see us moving to the outfield, right? So he's a catcher slash infielder, 95 speed. I'm gonna put him at utility because I think I might move him to first and then we might move Donahue behind the plate, even though it it was available, even though we changed them. I might move him to behind the plate, but uh, you know, let's see what else. Caldero, I want him to be able to play the whole outfield. Quant, Quant is a catcher. He DH for us. Hmm. So we move. Hold on. We move Duarte to center or the outfield. We move Quant to behind the dish. That's a good look. Igawa, he's already a utility. We're not gonna move him. Okay, so I like that. I like the possibilities of things we have to move these guys next year. That's a plus. So we we got some options, even though we're losing that 99 speed out in center, we got a 94 and 95 possibility. So here on recruiting, we, we do get a catcher in Eric Rush, and we also get Bobby Coit. Two of the guys we wanted. Let's take a look at the guys that rejected us. Jernigan was going to be fire. He goes to Coastal Carolina 77. We also lose Rolls to Coastal Carolina. We lose Casa to, to Kentucky. We lose Moore to uh, Wofford or Western Carolina. And we lose Kyle Grandizio to Kentucky. So Kentucky and Coastal Carolina swipe guys that could have made immediate impacts on our team. Eric Rush as a recruit catcher, second year starter, 60%. 60% uh, scholarship, make offer. Did he accept that? He does accept that, let's go. And then we got Bobby Coit, 72 overall. I'll give him, let's go three year starter, but I'll give him 
that should be able to get him like that way to give him some wiggle room in case he doesn't start so we are going to be lacking on scholarships a little bit here but we got some walk on guys who can come on we got a 68 overall uh pitcher you know what i mean no promises zero percent make the offer 66 overall first baseman uh we got brian grant who we're going to bring on as a walk on we got Puntney. We're going to bring it on as a walk on shortstop slash outfielder 68 overall Brian Donalds, which is going to be good. Uh, let's see. We got 61 overall second baseman. Hopefully he'll 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 end up being worth a while. And then we got a 62 overall starting pitcher. These are the guys Whitman Donalds Putney Grant person couch Kasparic Coit Rush. These are the guys that you guys can submit to become these players so we can have our subscriber recruits i'm probably going to take a picture of this and then i'm going to go ahead and uh, upload it like we normally do and give you guys a chance to submit your players so you guys the subscribers can become players in this series per usual all right guys so we already know we're bringing on russ we're bringing on coit now i gotta make sure i know my some of my other guys couch was coming to the squad casper was coming to the squad putney was coming to the squad whitman was coming to the squad donald's grant person we might need to bring a couple more guys to to reach that 30 threshold but i really don't care about that i guess i'll bring in signs scenes and dehan that way we could just have the 30 people but but i will drop them if necessary you know what i mean when it comes when it comes down to it we'll go with we'll go into the season with 30 guys so now let's take a look at our staff if we hit any of our goals to bring in level one staff you start off on level zero so we did well enough to where we can bring in a pitching coach in Dieterman, reynolds or flores looks like Dieterman is going to be the best Best bet we're going to go from a 54 a 43 overall coach to a 54 overall coach yes sir and then now next up we can go from a 45 overall ellsbury to a 54 overall uh delisandro when it comes to fielding coach so that's going to make our guys get better there then we also got better trainer we're going to go to 55 overall newman whose recovery is better durability is better leg strength is better yes sir and we don't we don't hit hit so hitting coach is the only thing we do not hit for the first season so we are actually going to be coming into season number two as the number 25 team in the nation team prestige is now up to two and a half i'm not sure if it was already there it looks like it might be a little more than two and a half but i'm gonna just say two and a half uh we're a c minus is pitching still a minus hitting a field and a minus speed man and one thing i want to do before before we forget i want to actually go to create and edit let's edit our players i'm gonna actually move duarte to center field his first position i mean his main position will be center field we've made that executive decision uh he will be our actual center fielder all right boys so versus righties this was going to look like we got donahue wong duarte meow Igawa, Donahue, Scotty Scott, Cliff Couch, Jared Quant. Then when it comes versus the lefties, we're going to go Donahue, Wong, Duarte, Meow, Igawa, Donahue, Scott, Couch, Rush. So two freshmen are going to be getting intricate uh, playing time here. I mean, Rush is probably going to get some spot starts behind the dish as well. You know what I mean? As a, as a righty. I mean, because we're not going to face a lot of lefties. Honestly, in college, you don't face a lot of lefty starters so i still want to make sure he's he's happy although you know what i mean the promises we did make him where does it tell you the promises we made so the promises we did make rush was a second year starter and by all means he's probably going to start behind the disc um you know what i mean year two because who are we going to say goodbye to he got was probably going to say goodbye and which means you know a guy like rush probably i probably put his secondary at like second base i feel like maybe second base will be will be that will be will be fine for him and we got some freshmen here who are walk-ons but if they're gonna be inactive i'm gonna go ahead and redshirt them that way they can actually save a year of eligibility so cast so uh casper we got dehan because you only have 25 active we got Cenas. we got putney who i actually think putney might actually get some burn eventually and then we got whitman who as a starting pitcher you feel me he's a starting pitcher but he also has a center field secondary so i'm anxious to see what that can become as a two-way player because you know in college two-way players is a thing as i exit out of that by mistake but we're going to also throw whitman you know a red shirt as well and there's got to be one more so we got whitman one putney two cines three 
Casper four and Dehan five. So we're not just going to waste those guys eligibility. Their walk ons are on the team. They're playing for school, but you know, what I mean, they still get to be around and learn from, you know, one of the better teams in the nation as as the number 25. Let's take a look at this rotation. Pontes is still the is still the ace, right? Then we got Halamanu and we got Tashira. Pearson, person, I feel like 71 stamina, true freshman. You know what I mean? Nonetheless, maybe we go with him, but Tashira is supposed to be a starter, but I think I'm about to just bite the bullet there because 57 stamina starting pitcher is actually nuts to me. So let's switch them. And Tashira was, was great out of the pin though. He was great out of the pin last year, right? So last season he pitched uh, 10 games, 35 and a third innings pitch. He went three and one, you know what I mean? 24 strikeouts to 12 walks, three, eight, two ERA. I just don't know if that's ready to start. Let's take a look at him in person. You know what I mean? Overall wise. So Tashira is a 77, person is a 68. But you also need strong arms out of that bullpen, bro. You know what I mean? Or do we just give Tashira the nod? I mean, not every starter has to go super deep into the game, I guess. We'll 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 leave we'll leave Tashira here. Person to get some starts here and there, I guess. We'll actually give Tashira the chance, bro. We'll give him the chance. So yeah, this is the rotation. Renee moves the closer over Ishimura. Mm-hmm. Not sure I like that. Seven games last year, 19 to third innings. I mean, Ichimura pitched 14 and two thirds. Yeah, Ichimura's ERA. Yeah, Ichimura is not a setup man. So let's go ahead and change that right now. Ichimura could also be a long reliever, but look at the long relievers we got 63 stamina, 64 stamina, 71. I still believe Tajira should come out of the pin, but I guess he's our one lefty. He's got better stuff than Halamanu, though. So, you know, whenever Tashira pitches, the bullpen is going to be brought into the game. But person is somebody I definitely think we'll end up seeing some good things out of, bro. We're pretty, we got a pretty young pitching staff, yo. So I'm not mad at that. Now let's take a look at recruiting. So baseball top 100. So the number three player in the nation is interested in us. So he's a starting pitcher, relief pitcher. Let's take a look if he has any draft buzz. Of course he does, but I feel like we got to add him to the list. You know what I mean? That's a generational ace we could bring on to the team. Let's go ahead and email them, email them just to let them know we're, we're interested. Uh, we got a junior college starting pitcher and I'm good. Then we got a pitcher slash right fielder and Alex uh, Benefield, high schooler uh, when it comes to right field. Um, we're pretty set there because Coit is going to be okay. Coit is going to be okay and I kind of want to, do I want to get Coit in over couch per se? Let me take a look here. Let's see what we actually promised Coit. Coit, we gave him, oh yeah, we so we gave him a full ride to, to guarantee a third year starter. But this is what I love most about offseason. But you know what I'm saying? Couch and Coit. Coit is a better hitter than Cliff Couch. 87 speed. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna start Coit over Couch, bro. He's a better hitter versus both, honestly. I don't know what I promised Couch. Oh, Couch is a walk-on. So yeah, Couch, you definitely you just gotta get in where you fit in, Pimpin. Coit, Coit is gonna play. Coit's on a full ride. 53 power, but 75, uh, you know, versus verse lefties and 71 contact versus righties, 87 speed. You know what I mean? That's what we do around here. Couch, I mean, you, you got more pop in your bat. I really don't know. You know what? Well, this one I'm gonna do actually for him. Uh, I'm gonna make him a DH primary. DH primary for Coit. Now let's go ahead and optimize the rosters again. Yeah, so Coit is there now, but I still do want Quant to start versus righties was it yeah Quant, i want Quant to start versus righties still over rush he's gonna bat knife still like he did last year but this line our lineup looks pretty our lineup looks pretty solid bro i'm not gonna lie but back to recruiting boys okay so we got alex benefield who also has draft buzz we're gonna uh email him a little bit just let him know we're interested shortstop slash utility chet haney apparently He's a 78. I don't know if I believe it. A lot of times that should be wrong. We also got Dylan Silverman. I love I love me some middle infielders because I feel like middle in infielders are very, very easy to move to the outfield as well. Um, we got Kelly Zamora, a pitcher. I'm not going to fill up my draft board too, too crazy this year, but I got some guys I'm trying to bring in, man. Uh, Eric Neeson, let's talk to you. And then Ed Gorka also was interested in you. Tim McAnus, <laughs> McAngus, wow. I was about to make a childish joke, but I was wrong. All right, so I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go after all the top 100 players because you do have all the other players that are interested that could also be pretty decent. I don't know if I'm really in a rush to try to bring some of them in. We're trying to build a top program here, man. So let's take a look at interested prospects, not interested yet, targeted prospects. Uh, Carl Sanabria. I mean, I'm trying to bring him in. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and max him out. We're gonna go ahead and talk to him. He's from Cali, you know what I mean? No interest yet. 
you know what I mean? But take a look at them. No special needs for any of these guys right now. Academics for Zamora are poor, so we gotta be careful there. Same thing for Tim McAngus. Hopefully if they come here, we don't have to uh, worry about suspending them or anything like that. So that's recruiting. And then lastly, you know, not lastly, but let's take a look at the uh, top 25. So you got UC Santa Barbara coming in as the number one team in the nation, which means they're probably bringing back almost everybody that they had. Oregon State, Buef, Texas, Louisville, Tennessee, Kansas State, Texas A&M, Wofford, Coastal Carolina, Wake Forest, uh, Southern Miss, Kentucky, Texas State, Dallas Baptist, Auburn, Cal State, Fullerton, uh, Stanford, TCU, Miami, Notre Dame, LSU, Vandy, Oregon, and us. UC Santa Barbara, bro. I'm really, really anxious to see what that team looks like because if they're as nasty as they were, matter of fact, I'm about to find them. So take a look at UC Santa Barbara's squad, right? They're bringing back Klassen, Clayson, Kirtley, Will Willits, Newman Jr., uh, who else? Mortison, Benbrook, uh, Gutierrez, Sprinkle. So yeah, a lot of their big name guys who was doing the damn thing last year, bro, they're back. But oh man, I hope that we get to see them again some point this year bro honestly we're already projected to be the top team in our conference as well that's a plus and to take a look at our schedule this year we're going to start things off with, with maryland we take on navy penn state ohio state uh oklahoma long beach state byu san diego uga utah kansas state then we open up conference play with uh louisiana tech then we take on san jose state then new mexico state we actually play Coastal Carolina, who stole two of our guys, recruiting-wise, Nevada, Fresno State, Sacramento State, and then we end things off with San Jose State. So that's the one team that we're going to play twice in conference play. Um, very, very doable schedule, right? Like Maryland is top 100, but not the greatest. Um, Navy's one of the worst schools. Um, Penn State is one of the worst schools. Ohio State's top 100. Long Beach State, eh. BYU is bad. UGA is pretty decent. San Diego is going to be good. Utah, not the craziest. You know what I mean? And when it comes to conference play, a lot of these teams, I don't think they're going to really be able to do anything to really mess with us, man. So that's how we're looking. And uh, as we gear up for season number two, we look to make, you know, another, another deep playoff run. You know what I mean? We made it to the regional final. Didn't get the job done, but we made it nonetheless. And I feel like this next season could be the year we break through into Omaha.